Hey pilots, Drain Man here and today I have got a very special video. In today's video we're going to be checking out the all new Kakute H7 Bluetooth and we're going to pair it up with a couple ESCs and check out your options. You're not going to want to miss this. Let's go! pilots I am super excited this is a H7 flight controller with Bluetooth and you already know how I feel about the H7 hype I'm excited to check this guy out let's go ahead and crack this puppy open so if I pop the seal and let's take a look inside let's see what does it come with Ooh, no peeking no peeking <laughs> all right so let's see what it comes with we've got connectors and more connectors okay which is always nice to have options and look at that so okay that guy's in there all right so we've got ourselves a 35 volt 1000 electrolytic capacitor this is nice this is a low ESR capacitor and from Holy Bro, if you're interested, you can purchase guys just like this. They come in a pack. This is a five piece 470. This is a five piece of 1,035 volt uh, capacitors. And these are just a little bit different. This is a conductive polymer aluminum solid capacitor, which is different than these guys here. This is just a aluminum electrolytic capacitor. And you know, they're very similar, but their properties are a little bit different. These are a little bit more expensive but they're very nice and you can pair them with your board uh, or you can pair with the one that it came with whatever makes you happy so you've got your different cables and then inside of here you've got your stack Whoo. Oh, oh, oh. oh my oh my god no. oh lordy Whoo. okay hold on I'm blown away I don't know if the camera is gonna do the type of justice that this gives but god Lee all right, let's go ahead and open it up because I want to dive into it just a little bit more. Okay, so if you were saying, well, it doesn't come with any mounting screws or bolts or nuts or grommets, that's not true because they've already put them in for you. A lot of stacks, a lot of flight controllers, when you're getting them, you're getting your board and then you're getting your stuff separated. This, I mean, this is already pre-assembled. All you got to do is drop this in and wire it up. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now to wire from ESC to flight controllers just one plug and they give you that plug. That plug is right here in this bag. It looks like it comes in two different length options too. So if you're needing to get close, you can. If you uh, are going to set these apart for any reason, you'll have plenty of length to do that. But there's another reason why they gave you two plugs and I'm gonna point that out for you right now and the reason why is because right here on this bad boy boom and boom you've got two four-in-one connectors that means you can easily run an octocopter or any type of sin lifter where you've got stacked ESC's and you're running four plus four eight motors okay and this guy is gonna do that with zero problems at all this price right here for this stack, no VTX, is $158. Now, by looking at it, you can see you're getting your money's worth. Now, I'm going to go ahead and set this aside. I want to go ahead and take a look at this other option just in case you were interested in not having the metal MOSFETs, which... To be honest, I don't know why you would do that. If money is a reason, then I, I completely understand. But if you have the money, spend the additional $18 because this one is a, it's 140 bucks for this flight controller, which is going to be phenomenal to pair it with this ESC right here. Let's go ahead and take a quick look. This guy here. Mm, mm, whoo, look at that. Now, you're getting plugs and grommets and other things and stickers too, but we're not going to go over that again. Look at that. That is absolutely gorgeous. But the side-by-side, -side, I mean, come on. Who do you want? Okay. But 
if you're gonna spend the money, the additional $18, you're gonna want this guy. But if for any reason you're not going to do that or you're trying to save a little money or maybe 50 amps is more than enough. I mean, we run 6S quads on 35 amps all day. This is 50, this is 65 amps. You don't really need it, it's overkill and it will ensure that you have no problems. Just be sure to put on your capacitor. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and jump into the scope. If you have purchased this board or after watching this, you jump down to the video description and grab the link and purchase this board, you may find that this board has shipped with a customized version of Betaflight 4.3. So when you plug it in, if you get an error, make sure that you are downloading the latest release candidate for the configurator, and that is 10.7.1. So make sure that you go ahead and do that. All right, let's dive in and check this puppy out. I am I'm stoked. Oh, the first thing that I'm pointing out and the first thing that I want to look at is the STM 32H7. That is 480 megahertz when this guy is flying up here at the top. This is where you're going to uh, wire up your analog camera. So you've got your ground five volts video in and your camera control. This chip right here, that's going to be our Bluetooth chip and all of this right here, this is your circuitry for your Bluetooth. So so that means that you can just download an app right on your phone, pair like Bluetooth, like you've got your little iPods or whatever your Bluetooth is with, and you can go ahead and uh, control this flight controller right from your phone. No speedy B adapter needed, none of that nonsense, no plugging in, holding in, light bow to power up, nothing. Just power this guy. Bluetooth it and enjoy the show. All right, so let's head over. So this connector here, we've already gone over. That is gonna be your first four in one. This will be your second four in one if you decide to do that. Uh, we're not seeing a lot of these these days and what this is is this is your barometer. So that is your BMP 280 uh, barometer and very, very nice it is. And this guy here is going to be your MPU 6000. That is your gyro. Uh, we're not really seeing the ICMs that much anymore. At least I feel like I haven't really seen them and I don't know if it has to do with the chip shortage or just reliability. I, I don't know, but uh, that is the MPU 6000. Uh, if we head across over here, this is going to be a big chunk of your pads right here. And uh, I'll run through them in case you've purchased this. So you've got battery voltage. There's your video out. You've got two ground pads. You've got R3 and T3. So that can be used as a spare UART or you can use that for your VTX or it can correlate with your DJI. That's up to you because your DJI MSP is going to run off UART 1, but if you're going to run the DJI radio, that is what that'll be for. But before I continue on, just in case you've heard that, pause the video and went to wire up your DJI. Keep in mind, it does come with a plug and you can just simply plug it in here. If you have the DJI goggles and you have the DJI radio, you don't have to solder anything. Your motors, that's it, okay? Hear me out, dude. You'll just plug in your ESE, plug in your air unit, solder your motors, and go fly. I mean, come on. It doesn't get better than that. All right, continuing on here, ground, 5 volts. Uh, you've got your UART 4, and that can be used as a spare, or you can use it for your GPS, whatever works for you. So right here, we've got our SDA, and we've got our SCL right here. And that is what you would use for your GPS, or you would use it for maybe a compass, something like that. That is your I2C, or some people say I squared C, you know, like the you know, to the power of two type square, yeah. All right, so the next one on here is your RX6 and TX6. This is what you would use for your receiver, your S-Bus, uh, FR Sky, Crossfire, whatever. That is what that guy is for. Okay, so moving right along, we've got a ground and a 3.3 volt rail. Uh, what that is really gonna be used for, not much. I mean, the whole board operates off 3.3, but as far as soldering things to a 3.3 volt pad, uh, I mean, maybe Spectrum, if anybody is still running Spectrum, you can go ahead and do that with that. All right, let's continue on. There's a big, healthy boot button right there, listen. 
That is a nice boot button. Normally we don't have them like that. Down here in this bottom left hand corner, we've got one, two, three, four pads. Now this is very simple. This is your, it's hard to see, but right there, see that Z minus. So that is your buzzer minus and your five volt. So if you have a buzzer, you're gonna, you know, go power here, you're gonna go ground here, uh, then you can set it up and activate it, or you would go five volt to your LED, ground to your LED, and then uh, your signal wire for your LED if you wanted to run RGB and control it with Betaflight. If you are unfamiliar with that, I've got a full video on that. I will link that for you down in the video description. Uh, let's continue on. We jumped over to this a little early because I didn't want anybody uh, to run off and start soldering when you have this plug right here. So this is your DJI plug. You can also use it for your CADIC. So when you get your DJI air unit, you've got a plug in the back of the air unit and then you've got your wires uh, you can swap that out for the cord that comes with this which is a plug by plug but for your Cadex Vista there is no plug it's just a bunch of little tiny solder pads that are a nightmare to get to uh, you can use this plug plug into the flight controller and then run those back and solder them up on your Cadex Vista or DJI air unit light whatever you want to call it so we've got our crystal here. We've got a uh, micro USB. I'm a little surprised that we're not seeing a uh, USB-C, but I mean that I, I don't know if that's a preference thing. I mean USB-C on paper is a better connector. I know that I feel more comfortable plugging into one of those, but uh, you know, not a deal breaker or anything like that. All right, let's flop this guy over and take a look at the back. No. All right, guys, looky here. So this is a full SD card port. If you are unfamiliar with this or you're like, well, why is that on there? That is for black box. If you don't know what black box is, I mean, check it out. If you're flying your quads and you're not having any issues, then don't worry about it. The next thing I'm looking at here is our OSD. This is our Betaflight OSD, and this is a traditional AT745 chip. Uh, that's pretty pretty standard on these boards. Uh, you should have a 27, yep, 27 megahertz crystal. Uh, what else we got? We've got some uh, inductors and they, oh, there we go, look at that. Okay, so this is your circuitry for your nine volt Beck. Yes, there's a nine volt Beck. That is what's being used for your DJI. When you plug in DJI, that's what you're getting, whether it's Vista or whether it's air unit. But the idea behind that is, is that your air unit's not gonna take full 6S. This flight controller can handle 8S. So, uh, win in that column, but you've got a nice Beck on board, thank you because I don't like buying backs and soldering them up and sticking them places and stuff like that. Then they short out or they can't handle it. Blah, 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 blah. Just put a back on board, thank you. All right, so Holy Bro did that. Shout out Holy Bro. And right there, this is a switching voltage regulator, AKA another back. Uh, this appears to be our five volt, I'm pretty sure, uh, because we've got 3.3 and then we've got five volts there. So. That right there, guys, is our H7 flight controller, and I've I've gone over quite a few boards. This is this is very impressive. It is built well, and if you've noticed this shine around here, this is just a little bit of conformal coating, or you know, it's like a silicone gel that they put over it, and it gives you a little bit of resistance when it comes to water or any type of moisture or anything like that. Of course, it is not waterproof by any means but it's a nice touch and it does help out. All right, so impressive. Me, huge, huge fan, hugely, hugely impressed. All right, so that is a beautiful H7 board. I absolutely love it. Uh, let's take a quick look at this. So we've got a 50 amp ESC, absolutely beautiful. Check that out. Uh, shunt resistors on board. You've got your two holes for your capacitor. We've got some very nice MOSFETs running up each side. Check that out. Okay, so let's go ahead and flip this guy over. And on the back, you can see we've got MOSFETs down each side. You've got some extra capacitors here right by where you plug in. Uh, and you can add, and you really should add, a secondary external capacitor, low ESR capacitor, but 
Uh, that is pretty much this thing uh, summed up in a nutshell. They have removed, or wherever they're purchasing, has removed the writing from the top of the chip. I'm not sure if that's you know, relevant or not, but I'm not able to tell you much about them. I do know that they are to be F4s, and F4 when it comes to uh, microcontrollers is up there, especially for an ESC. We've been running F, you know, F0s and, and F1s and stuff, so that's very, very impressive. Now, here is where I get blown away. Woo -hoo -hoo. Look at that. All right. So there is, again, your middle, your BB2 chips with your uh, microcontroller units. Very nice. Uh, we've got metal MOSFETs. If you were always curious to see what one of those looks up looks like up close, there you go. Whew. Look at that. All right, you've got your nice pads on the side. You've got metal MOSFETs on both sides. And uh, if we flip this over, here is where you should really be impressed. Look at this. Look at this. Holy mackerel. Capacitor, 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 blah, blah, blah. Holy cow, with all these MOSFETs, beautiful metal MOSFETs. I just, you know, I, I wasn't going to get into too many crazy specs. I just wanted to throw it under the scope, let you take a peek at it. All right, Pat, so that is going to do it for the Holy Bro H7 Bluetooth flight controller review. We also took a quick little peek at the 65 amp ESC and the 50 amp ESC. If you guys you want to see this flight controller get built maybe you're curious on how it all goes together i can do a little bit more on it let me know as far as me building a quad i mean plug in my esc <laughs> plug in my dji i mean but uh i can still build it for you if you guys want to see it going to analog quad or something like that maybe i can strap it to a racer and we can check it out see how it does we can see how the 65 amp does under pressure huh Huh? All right, pilots. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that you guys will go out and get your own H7, and I will see you on the next one.